Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm here, but you can't see me. So let's go fix that. How you guys doing otherwise? Yeah, it looks like my camera isn't feeding at the moment. Oh, that's a, that's a drag. Oh, that's better. Yay. Hello. Welcome to Friday. How's everybody? I'm super excited. Let me give her my echo. So this one, this, this video, the A-B test one, didn't get a whole lot of love, but that's okay. You know, no big deal. Um, let me just turn off my, a few more Streamlabs tweaks. I think it's a big deal though. I, I'm excited about it. Like it's one of the three common use cases for me, like right out of the box. You know, you're super excited about module federation and you're like, how am I going to use this, right? How am I going to use this in a way that, that doesn't mess up, you know, the, the company or the organization, but, but shows some benefits right away. And I definitely think like the resilient header is a, a really, really good use case for that. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge problem. Every company I know struggles with their header, getting that working and having an ability to have a module federation build that then if that doesn't work, falls back onto the uh, NPM build is really cool. And then also the live preview functionality. So I, there's also a lot of companies that have this sort of wallish separation between like admin side of the house and your front end side of the house and getting those two to talk and, and share componentry so that, you know, the, the folks on the admin side of the house can edit and get a live preview and it looks the same as what's actually going to go onto the site. That's a huge deal. And then I think there's this, I think there's AB test and I, I think it's a very natural fit and it's like, small. So it's, it's a nice, you know, kind of low hanging fruit. And so what I did in this video was in the, the in this Wednesday's video was to uh, show an AB test, which we'll do with these with the dogs. So we'll like wrap the dogs in, in, in different looks and see which one performs better. Um, we'll just randomly choose them. We won't actually do the work of like figuring out the analytics, which would be cool. Um, and then we'll take that and extract that into its own like uh, federated module variant library. And uh, maybe we'll do some unit tests because that's another thing I think people get caught up on is, you know, so cool, I've got this import statement that says, you know, import, you know, CMS live preview or whatever. Like, how do I go and test that? Um, and there's, yeah, it's pretty simple. We've done this thing before, but, you know, just to actually lay it out. Um, anyway, hi, Stefan. I hope, you know, hope you're enjoying this. Hope you have some good plan for the weekend. And uh, let's go, let's, let's have some fun. So I'm gonna go create a directory called AB. Just play around. And we're gonna do our MPX dget thing. We're gonna use that starter kit that, um, let's see, so this guy over here, so which is now a template. Still not sure I really like this redesign of, uh, GitHub. Okay, so oh, that's not going to be right. D get that at main. And uh, let's call this, I don't know. Uh, I'm really good. I'm excited. It's, I, I hope it's going to be a good weekend. I got a, um, a projector for the porch and we watched uh, Serenity last night uh, out, you know, when it got dark. It's super cool, man. Outside. It was great, you know, kind of like, like a movie experience. Like, I don't know about you, but I miss the movies. I miss going to movies, and it gave me that kind of like movie-going experience again. So that was very exciting. Um, all right, so let's see. We create a host host page for our dogs, and fire this up. Yeah, that was very fun. And my wife was like, "Hey, why don't we go buy and get one a projector or get a projector?" And it turned to be really cool. So it's a good call, and they're not all that expensive. Um, Nowadays, so then you get yourself a nice projector and a screen. Screen's pretty cheap, and it looks pretty good. Okay, uh, let's go into host and install it. What else have I got planned for the weekend? Um, hmm, uh, probably some more work on the dashboard. 
actually, come to think of it. Uh, we just got Auth baked into it, so that's pretty big. And I've been doing um, some nights and weekends work on uh, getting the visualizations cleaned up and more polished. Uh, so maybe you can take a look at that too. So I can show you what the most recent rev on that is. Okay, so uh, we got our Webpack 5 starter kit. Pretty cool. You go over here, app.jsx. So nothing we haven't seen before. We use this a million times before. Wow, okay. Nope, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some variants. So we're going to kind of wrap this in a div. Yeah, really excited about the dashboard, actually. Uh, this is a cute dog. You should adopt this dog, which you should. If you... Both my dogs are rescue dogs. Rescued one of them off Facebook. <laughs> you should adopt this dog. And the other just walked into my daughter's fourth birthday party. So that was kind of fun. Just walked in off the street. Hey, I'm here. Adopt me. Um, okay, so we're going to say uh, frame. And we're going to give it a source, the picture of the dog. And I guess any style stuff, we're going to make this a nice a nice component, right? So some of you would be happy to show to mom. And let's say, okay. <laughs> hey, mom, here's my components. Um, okay. Oops, wow. Where'd that come from? So also bring in a style. And we'll just unfold style in there, and then we'll add on the... Uh, like a border and padding. And just so we can see the, the different variants. Uh, one PA, 10, let's make a big 15 pixels of solid green. I'm going to do green versus blue or something. And then we got to do a source. Actually, I should just I could remove that, but why not? Because, I mean, I just bring it into the props whatever it's all good you know it kind of shows what it's supposed to be so let's see so frame a and then we need a source let's go find a dog let's go find ourselves a pooch that would be a cute name for this site place pooch so i'm not gonna do random because that, that would confuse us in thinking like oh it's you know we're changing out the the, the dog all the time oh i love that corgi uh, oh, this is so cute. Okay, that's a good one. So what is that? It's 89. All right. And drop that in there. Whoops. That's not going to work. That's going to work. 89. If memory serves. Okay. Well, that's another thing I miss. It's, uh, Iron Chef. God, that was such a great show. Uh, okay, and it's going to be 500 by 280. The original Japanese version of it, so good. Uh, all right, looking good. Okay, got this cute little dog, sort of out in the green there. So we'll call this our first variant. So we're gonna go over and extract this in its own file. And this is primarily for you know, lazy loading, right? We wanna, we wanna code split this out and it's a lot easier if it's in a different file or it's doable. Send a different file. And we'll get frame B going. And so what should say, you know, we said like a dashed blue. You can visually see the difference if you're colorblind as well. Okay. And we'll bring that in, import frame A from frame A. And frame B from frame B. All right. Let's take a look. Oh, that's nice. That's cute. Got two different variations now. So A and B. So now we need to choose between the two. So let's go and create a, a set of tests. Like in any, any of these systems, you're always going to have, you know, the current, the, you know, the, the given test. And we'll just say that we've got I don't know, frame A and frame B as our different options. 
And then we need a chooser. So some way to choose between those tests. So we will create a new component called variant chooser. So what are we what test are we running? So in this case, test one. What are the variations? So I don't know, variants, variations, whichever way you call it. Uh, and then so that'd be like frame A maps to component frame A, frame B, so on and so forth. And then let's see all the rest of the props. So we're gonna have to store the state, so like the selected variant. And we'll do use state for that. And how are we gonna make that? We're gonna make that by doing tests, test, right? So it's gotta be one of those. And then within there, we're gonna multiply math.random times the length of that array. And that's gonna give us a floating point index, which is no bueno. Maybe bueno, but probably not. So let's floor that down so that it's always gonna be you know, lower. It's not gonna be higher, because then we might run into the top of the array, which is also no bueno. So I'm pretty happy about that, I think. So then we gotta grab the component that we, we asked for. So variations, selected variant, right? Oops, not that. Okay. And let's render it. So return component. I love that React can do this. I mean, I get that it's just JSX, but it's just really nice. So we're going to spread the props. You don't need to tell it the variation of the test, I don't think. Because it doesn't really need to know that. And let's see, does it, oh, okay. So Prettier likes this. I love that. So let's replace this variant, uh, this frame A with variant chooser. Now we need to give it the test. So test one. And we need to get the variations. So we'll say frame A is frame A. And frame B is frame B. So have you done A, B tests before at work? Just curious. Oh, and it didn't work. Yay. This is fun. I love like figuring out, OK, is that it? Oh, select variant. All right, there we go. Looking like it's given us different things. Interesting study. I, I, a friend of mine was telling me that um, data scientist was talking about how random, real random, doesn't feel random. And she'd do these, these, uh, you know, talks, and she'd ask people to go and create some random numbers, and go up to the board, create some random numbers, and she then look at them and. She would know, I don't know how she did it, but like, yeah, there was also like real genuine sets of random numbers mixed in there. And she could always tell like the human generated random numbers because they, they're trying to be too random. I don't know, kind of weird. Okay. All new to you, great. Well, good thing to know. So the idea behind an A-B test then, just to get me familiar with that, is like, let's say you, is primarily like an e-commerce setting or politics is, a, is like the example I think. The Obama campaign sort of spearheaded the use of this in politics. The idea being like, okay, so you've got a, a red buy button and a green buy button. Like you just basically throw random variations at the customer, although you keep a cookie. So, you know, a given customer will only get variant A or B, right? And then you, you track your conversions based on what, which one you're showing. And so if, you know, you get a, a 5% uplift when you have a red button, then great, you know, you, you, you declare a winner and, and go for it. And the idea, there's a couple of little challenges in here. We're going to just deal with deciding which variant to show and also the variants themselves. But then there's a whole you know, kind of data processing side on the other end of this, and there's a bunch of vendors in that space. You know, Adobe is a you know, classic example um, that do all the data science works to figure out when you have a statistic Mm, statistically significant sample size, and then you can basically declare a winner. And so it basically takes the, um, it's a way of taking, you know, the, the uh, how you feel about it in your heart out of the equation and going with more data sciences. Right? You know, hey, this is just better. People like it more. They, then they, they've 
voted with their feet. You know, they say, I add to cart if it looks like this and not like that. Okay, so uh, that's what we're doing here. We have, you know, two different variations. We've got two, two different vari variations of this dog. Well, of this, the frame around the dog. One is a big old green thing like this, and then one's this big old blue thing like that. So let's go take a look at our network tab to see what we're doing. And we're basically, well, we, we're getting the JPEG and all that. Let's just look at JS. So all of this code, frames, all of the React code is in source app JSX, right? So that's not great because, you know, in reality, these, these variations can be fairly large. So we want to split them out. And an easy way to do that is, like, let's go over here to, is to start bringing in module federation for this. And, and it's Webpack. There are multiple ways to do this, but uh, we'll just, we'll do it with module federation since that's what we're into nowadays. So we're going to bi-directionally expose these components. So host is not only going to uh, vend the components, but it's also going to consume them, which is really cool. It's a new feature that came out in beta 17 of Webpack 5. And we'll say that we want frame A, and it's going to be the source of that is frame A. And then frame B. Like so. Cool. We are going to need to reboot this guy. Okay. Let's get it so it reads the, the new Webpack config. And the other thing we need to do, I guess we're on 8080. Let's go check. So we're on localhost 8080. So I'm going to grab that. That's public path. And drop this into the head. Add in a script tag with a source of that. And then also the name of the remote entry file that we've created, like that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what this is, so in module federation land, this remote entry file is basically a manifest of all of the stuff that you are exposing to other applications. So there is that host. That's what we named it over here. And this that remote entry then has references to both frame A and frame B when you want them. So, but we aren't actually using that yet because we're just still importing it from the local file system. So we need to change that. Change that to a React Lazy. How far can I roll with this extended selection? Pretty good so far. Well, they're the same width, so... Dang, that was smooth. Okay, but this isn't going to work because, you know, React doesn't like rendering promises. Funny thing that. What we need to do is drop this in a suspense. And let's say, oh, and that's still going to be wrong. Uh, but give me a second. Fallback, loading variant. Okay, and then we're gonna use home to get back onto ourselves to get those those components. So let's go here again. And it's blown. Why is it blown up? Why are you blowing up? Can't find it. Home for oh host. So used to using home in these examples. Host. There it is. Nice. Okay. So we picked frame A and we loaded frame A. So that's pretty nice. So now, depending on your variations, you know, you're not gonna go and load everything in one shot. You only load the one that you wanna show to this customer. Okay, so now that we've got that, so we want this to be usable by multiple applications. So let's go build ourselves a rudery, rud bleh, rudimentary uh, AB manager. That's not right. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so host, yarn start. And I wanted to create a new one. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so let's go back over here. 
And let's use that same D git command to use our, our starter kit, which is, well, not available, actually probably in the comments down in the description down below. And what, so we call this AB manager and we'll give it a nice name, AB dash manager. Oops. My uh, VS code foo is not hot today. I'm clicking all over the wrong buttons. All right, let's eh, let's not start that up quite yet. And the reason being that like it's it's all messed up. Like it's on eighty eighty and whatever, so it's just gonna collide. So let's go back over here and look at our webpack config. So we're gonna want to drop this on eighty eighty one. Clearly, just get it out of the way. Uh, it's not going to need any any uh, CSS stuff or any uh, HTML stuff, so we can get rid of that. Start trimming this guy down, and we're going to call this AB underscore M or Manager, sure, whatever. And the reason being that you know, as I showed in the, the before, they're in the remote entry. We're actually defining a variable on window for this. So if I were to do AB under you know that dash Manager, that would literally be a uh, uh, minus, which is not going to be a fun or valid variable name. And what we can do is then we can actually alias this on the other side. So that's no problem. So it still looks like admin AB under uh, dash manager. All right. Well, we don't have anything in there yet. Although, so just to prep for doing the uh, yeah, let's just do this. So I, I'm going to alias AB manager to the variable AB underscore manager. So when we remote, where we're going to use, this is going to be what we're going to import, import, you know, AB manager, AB dash manager, AB dash manager slash and whatever we want. Okay. So now we got to go and get our tests. All right, and we will export these. Okay. And we don't need that guy. Don't need that guy. Don't need that. And this one is just, I don't know, export uh, default function that returns true. Pretty nice, very positive function. Okay, and we also want this variant chooser, so that's shared because something you should share. Variant chooser. Not every application needs to write this for themselves. And we'll import React. So it's funny. I um I I asked. There's a person in the last one that talked about um, Angular. And so I asked in the community section, hey, do you want to do Angular? And wow, some very negative feedback about that. And I'm, I'm curious, I wonder if it's the fact that like most of the videos that I do are React and therefore I've just got a React community or if it's like, ooh, Angular, I don't know. Because I, I think one of the interesting things about Module Federation is we could do interop like with business logic between applications of different um, with different UI toolkits on top, or frameworks. So I wouldn't mind trying it out. Uh, but if you guys are like, hmm, no way. Not excited about that at all. I don't know. Tests. Source tests. And then variant chooser. Okay. So that's all we need to do to expose the AB manager and its stuff. So let's try this out. Let's, uh, I think we already yarned. So let's yarn start. Okay, so we don't have any UI, but we do have this and uh, looking pretty good. Okay, so AB manager. Okay, as you can see, like there's this module map in there and it's got our variant chooser and it's got the tests. So this is basically the manifest of what would go out to the client. and. And we're in development mode, so you know, in production mode, this will all be minified and you know, kind of thing. Uh, all right, so let's use this. Sounds like I got a good deal going on. Uh, oh wait, 
Yeah, that's fine. We're gonna need to go over and include it. Okay. Let's bring this in. All right. So now we've got the remote entry, but we don't know, we have no way of really importing it because we haven't changed the Webpack config to say that we have that as a remote. That is not the right Webpack config. This is the right Webpack config. So again, we're gonna use exactly the same thing as we did over here. So, well, let's go back to that. Copy that out, make sure that I get everything right. Okay, cool. So now we look at, if we import from ab-manager, AB it'll alias to ab underscore manager, which is on window, we'll get our code. And we can start that back up again. Cool, looking good. Okay, so let's go back over here to this guy. And we don't, do we need to bring in tests? Oh, that's interesting. This is probably gonna blow up. And let's see how it blows up just because we're crazy that way. Okay, so we want to bring in variant chooser. And this, yeah, that'll be fun because we'll diagnose why it, why it doesn't work. Um, variant chooser. And let's see it, let's see it go. Okay. So what's it gonna say? Yeah, test is not defined. That, that's about right. That's kind of nice. Good, uh, good feedback. So let's go see why that's the case. So get rid of this. And reason being that test over here, I didn't import it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import tests, but I'm gonna import them. I could just go like that. I could just go say tests, right? Uh, but I want them code split out because I wanna be able to deploy just the tests file if I want to. So that you know the, the actual variant chooser code remains absolutely static, but you can actually just tweak the data to kind of select one. Okay, so let's try it out and refresh. Chunk loading here. Oh, okay. All right. So this is something I'm I've been seeing a bit of in beta 18. Is this this small issue here? Uh, we'll see how much of an issue it is. Yeah, probably the same thing. Okay. Interesting. I haven't really been able to, yeah, I've seen this. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, unexpected token. That's a good one. Did I mess that up somehow? Maybe, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Export def. Ah! <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work. All right, let's try it again. Hey, okay. Maybe it wasn't 18. Maybe it was just my syntax error. That's fine. Okay. Okay, so that's looked pretty good. So now we've got a, a remote uh, system there. You know, you got your remote AV manager. Should we fire this up on the dashboard and see what it looks like? Have you guys seen the dashboard at all? Uh, you know, I've been working on it a lot lately, so, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, and it will actually, it'll give us some sense of what, hopefully, what we're looking at. So I'm gonna go and just bring up my copy Let's, here we go. We'll go, to, go to my copy of the dashboard and in the dashboard FE and we'll get rid of the current example data. And then run it, uh, yarn dev. So we build a dashboard and the idea is that you want some insight into all of your, your components and all your modules and how they're all working together and all that. And so if you fire it up with no data, you get this nice little landing page here. Yeah, it's okay, all right. Well, let's, uh, let me show you some, some new goodies then because it's actually even better. So it's got a little bit of intro in here about like how to add the plugin. So let's go do this. So I'm gonna go stop this, stop this, and go over into Webpack. Oh wait, hold on, let's first yarn at it. Okay, that was pretty quick. It's a pretty lightweight plugin. Basically it just runs the stats and then kind of 
backtracks and tries to figure out like everything that was exported and all that. Uh, it's going to get more robust over time, believe me. Um, okay. And then all we need to do is just drop that dashboard plugin in there and then give it the URL of the dashboard. So that's it, uh, of this API update method on dashboard. So pretty simple REST request. The actual backend itself is GraphQL, but I wanted a pretty simple updater. Uh, double commas, that's not going to work. Okay, let's, uh, let's try this out. You go yarn build. And if this works, I should see over here. Yeah, uh, there we go. I just added host. So let's go take a look at our dashboard. Great. Okay, so cool. We can see that host both exports, exposes, and consumes frame A and frame B. And it overrides, it shares out React and React DOM. All right, now let's go and add this guy. So every time this builds or starts, uh, it's going to go and fire off data to the dashboard. So in this case, we added AB Manager. Nice. Very cool. Okay. Ah, okay. So these are connected, but I've, I've found a bug that the aliasing that I did, AB Dash Manager to AB Underscore Manager, didn't carry through. So that's something I've got to look at. But, so you can kind of see, well, there you go, look at that. Probably bug related. Um, and you can get information on this. It pops up this new window on the side that gives you about information about modules and consumers and all that. Let me make a more interesting demo because that one obviously is showing me a bug that I need to work on, which is great. Always good to know. Uh, okay, let's move, let's get rid of the dashboard example. FM dashboard. So it, it basically stores local data wherever you want it. It's, it's as a data, it's a, a Docker image. FM dashboard example to FM dashboard. And then yarn dev that up. And so this is my, my clean demo data that I work on. Um, and you can kind of click on it and you can see, okay, so the search module, it consumes a uh, search list and are it's consuming it, the, the people that consume it are home and nav, and this is what they're consuming. Um, yeah. So it just gives you all this, this great biographic data and, you know, we're starting to kind of flesh this out uh, as we go. So super excited about that. Um, I hope you are as well. And we're going to keep on pushing releases to Docker as we go. So very excited about that. All right. So I'm going to remove the dashboard plugin. So clear, clearly I have a bug. So might as well just not show that off. And I don't want to corrupt my example data with it. Okay. So the last thing I do in the video is talk about unit testing and how to unit test code that has these weird imports that don't exist, right? Because that's not a, an NPM package. So how do we go and test that? Or more interestingly, like, e more easily, how do we go and test like this guy right here? Because if we try and import this, then it's going to go looking for AB Manager in uh, package.json. It's not going to be there. So if that's interesting, I'll, I'll push on with that and we can keep having a look. So... I'm not the world's best test person, but I will I'll walk you through this. If I mess up, then you say, oh, Jack's not the world's best test person, but that's cool. So we're going to add Jest. That's my favorite thing to do, it's Jest. Um, and I'm going to use snapshots. Sorry. Just, you know, I know people, I, there's some like visceral thing out there. People really hate snapshots. So let's go see, uh, test and we'll run just, I'm pretty sure that we need to create a folder called tests. And then within that, a, I don't know, a variant chooser spec JS. Sure. So let's import react, um, react 
What else? I just have to make sure. So, uh, okay, that's good. Oh, we also need like Babel Jest, I think, because it's like it's got to run that yarn add Babel Jest. I think it is. It's either Babel Jest or Jest Babel. Yeah, Babel Jest. Cool. All right. Uh, it should render variant A. Which, of course, leads us to, hey, dude, there's a random number in there. How's that going to work? So let's go and make this testable. I guess I could pass in like a, a random number function. Or I could just say, hey, you know, choose this variant if I say that variant. So I'm just going to pop that in there. And that's not unusual uh, when people make A-B test variations. In general, systems like Optimizely, which is another uh, third-party uh, vendor out there, will go and allow you to kind of force a particular variant. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Thought some naming conventions for federated modules. Yeah, right? I was actually thinking about this this morning. You know, as, you, as we uh, go out from team to team, so one of, the pro one of the things I've been thinking about a lot is, like, how do you scale up the dashboard from, you know, a team of, you know, f five teams working together on, on a microsite to, you know, 500 teams, right? And namespacing, you know, kind of becomes an issue because even what you really want, you want to encourage other teams and other organizations reusing your federated, mo federated modules. Like, classic example is like this, you know, the admin side of the house versus the front end side of the house where you got admin working on like a, a headless CM a CMS that they're editing and want a live preview on. And then there's organizationally, there's in a different org entirely, you got the, the front end folks who are actually showing that CMS data and they've got rendering components. And invariably, right, they both write their own rendering components and they're totally out of whack and out of sync. And wouldn't it be great if you could use federation, federated modules to kind of go between those two and, but that becomes like a big deal as you as you federate more and more and more. Yeah, getting the namespacing right is is going to be critical. So, and I think that uh, the alias thing that I talked about here early on, like this stuff, uh, is going to be critical to that because you know we could say I don't know data sciences, right? AB Manager like that, and that's fine, right? And then this could be you know data. You know, data sciences, AB manager or something like that, right? And so um, you can still do that kind of work. Uh, clearly the dashboard needs to support that. It doesn't right now, but it will. I got my own bug report on myself today. That's cool. Okay. Um, boy, where were we? Oh, we were testing. Yeah, so let me finish up on this testing stuff and then I'll answer uh, questions about the dashboard plugin which is a lot of fun. And I think it's like React Test Renderer. React Test Renderer, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's actually the, the better the better search is just uh, React Snapshot. As this one has like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love, I love decent stuff like this. See, copy, paste. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we need that, da, 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 da. and we need our variant, right? Import variant chooser, and we're gonna we're gonna literally do this. AB Manager variant chooser, which is not going to work. Man, I almost pulled like a. What was it the room there? Lisa, I did not. Um, okay, frame A. This is frame A. And frame B, this is frame B. Just so we, you know, we have two different things to choose from. And we'll say that the variant is A. Variations are Oh, wait, hold on. Frame A and frame B. So it's frame A. Frame A. And variation B is frame B. Yes, I'm a fan of very bad films. 
um, test is test one. Okay, so ideally that I, I think this is I think this would work were it not for this. So let's try this out. So yarn test. And if it fails on the import, then that's a good sign. So the, the question really becomes, how do we alias this guy out? You know, how do we alias this so that it actually goes back to source? And I'm going to pull a off screen trick there and go and grab in code from the actual video, the original video. And we do use this module resolver plugin, which is meant, meant exactly for this. I mean, people will do things like, as an example, they'll alias, um, at to, you know, slash source or whatever, like that kind of thing. And you see that a lot or tilde, you know, or components is slash components. And then, you know, in your import statements would be import components foo. And then, you know, if you, if, if you want to do that, that's totally cool. That's up, totally up to you. Yarn add uh, babel plugin. All right. Oh my gosh, that worked. Okay. Hmm. Yarn test. All right, cool. Let's see. Do we get a snapshot? There you go. Cool. Now I could go over the other one, but yeah, in all honesty, right, it's just more of the same, right? So yeah. And every big off the shelf node tool is going to support aliasing, right? Your ESLint, Webpack, obviously, Webpack's not going to have a problem with this because Module Federation is doing that aliasing. But yeah, every one of your, you know, top of the shelf tools is going to give you the ability to handle aliasing like that. And, you know, if again, if you want to do like, you know, data sciences, AB manager, totally cool. I think that's great. Uh, okay, so uh, questions, questions, questions. Let's see. So you have, all right. I have a query specific to the dashboard plugin. Maybe you can address this later. Later is now. Uh, what are your thoughts on naming conventions? Oh, so this is the question. Okay, cool. Uh, what are your thoughts on naming conventions for federated modules? Seems like having something consistent would be nice. Yes. Uh, similar to names, similar to names. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, does it depend on module for? Does it depend on module federation plugin to work? That's a great question. Um, we started mining more of package JSON. In fact. Like, let's go, is it still running? The Federated Dashboard? Um, there are parts of this that don't have anything to do with model, module federation at all. Like, for example, this dependency graph, which is, oh, there it is. It is going to run because that server is still running. But this basically only requires, like, package JSON. So, um, yeah, I mean, it would be my intention so that uh, to give you insights into regular node modules and no federation at all, because uh, they are they're, they're definitely part of the ecosystem and I, and I would really like to be able to see over time as we start extracting more out of no modules, you can just visualize that in in this tool, right? You know And the other thing that, that um, I was I've been doing a lot of work with is uh, the idea of the sort of resiliency, right? There's gonna be hesitation to just go whole hog into, uh, into module federation without any kind of fallback. And so that was actually what I did in the resilient header video and the live stream after that, uh, the header, the nav system would create both artifacts for module federation, which we deployed to like primarily probably S3 uh, as well as NPM. And the idea being that as a consumer, it's very safe. I go and I, I import both the, the federated module and I include the NPM module. And then I use uh, error boundaries and fallbacks so that should the module federation build fail or be inaccessible or whatever, I then fall back onto a lazily loaded version of the NPM version. And it's I, I liken it to like rock climbing and Python, pitons, I guess. Uh, where, you know, you're going up up the side of the cliff and you're, you're popping in these little pitons as you go. And then, you know, if you fall, you don't fall that far. And you'd fall back basically to the last time that you built uh, the app and deployed it um, 
probably depends on obviously your package JSON and if you're picking up automatically new versions of the header, whatever. But you know that's really in your control, and it gives you kind of like this. It's like a sort of standard CI Docker everything's built deployment with the extra added advantage that if module federation works, then it's live sharing. But you don't actually you're not totally dependent on live sharing on on feder federated modules for it to work. And so yes. Uh, I definitely see this as part of uh, of that solution because you you would basically see the library existent twice, once for NPM and then another time for federated modules. Uh, when is on the fly public path going to be available? Oh, good question. Um, that is actually you hit up uh, scripted alchemy on Twitter. That's that's Zach and. He's been doing a lot on that. And the reason being that um, we have an intention with the dashboard to maybe not in the, maybe as like a freemium kind of thing up, up, up the chain a little bit, uh, support versioning. So we could then like move the public path uh, to say, okay, I released 1.0, there was a problem with 1.1, uh, .1, there was a problem with it, let's roll back. And then the, uh, client side code would basically look at essentially a redirector and go back to 1.0 almost instantaneously uh, and give you instantaneous rollbacks should you have a problem with your federated modules. So yeah, so it's talk to scripted alchemy about that. Also, I'm Jahur on Slack on on <laughs> on Twitter. So if you have any questions, if you don't want to put them up in this forum, that's fine. Just hit me up on Twitter. I'm really easy to talk to. Um, I would love your feedback on all this stuff and, you know, I'm happy to give it. That's kind of why I'm here. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Um, use case would be more one month repos, find packages, move, can move to pa root package JSON. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. Definitely looking at, at, at mining more of, out of package JSON. And in fact, and I don't know, maybe this is, I think it's cool. Uh, I actually, I've had a long-term interest in this since I was UI architect at Walmart Labs in Orsa Actual. Um, in doing cross-team intelligence around projects, right? So go and grab all the package JSONs and then look through them, find all the dependencies, actually go in and d use like... Um, uh, you know, Babel extensions and things like that to actually parse through the code, find all of the React usages, and then give you a huge gra uh, 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 graph of where everything is used and consumed and all that. And this kind of languished, but I think federated modules and this dashboard actually brings that back. So I'm looking to go and upgrade the plugin so that we'd use, like, for example, Doctrine to go in and parse out JS doc stuff from anything you expose and then you could do things like add on okay this component is i18n compliant this component is alley compliant this component uh, is responsive and then as i'm using the dashboard as a way to go and figure out if there's a carousel i can consume which is a use case that we want to support right then you could look at the at the list of available carousels which of course are going to be multiples um, and see which one fits your needs with all these tags. And then you get to make up whatever those tags are and you, you agree to them on uh, in kind of an organizational level. Okay. Uh, love to see it as a standalone web pack where module federation would be part of the existing product. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you mean the module, the, the dashboard plugin? Yeah. I think the dashboard plugin has legs all on its own. It was kind of like a little thing to you know, like a little shim to get us into uh into uh the dashboard oh but i i do believe actually it, i mean true I mean, you could easily export that data as as valuable data on its own that you can then post process but i mean understand that the dashboard itself which is is free has a graphql endpoint obviously in this case running on uh so let's, let's do a query here. Applications, name, ID, whatever, right? 
And you can, you know, you can go look through this graph and get all the dependencies, make searches on it, and you can say, hey, where, you know, give me any carousels. And I can foresee people coming up with, you know, Slack bots that would go and hit this endpoint. So I could be in Slack and I could just say, you know, show me who's working on carousel 1.0. And it gives me all, everybody who's then brought in via either NPM or federal modules, that version of the carousel. And that gives you some insight. And it, it creates this virtuous cycle where you start using the code base as an away, as a, as a live set of examples. So, oh, I want to use carousel. Show me who uses it. Cool. It brings you back a list of Git URLs, maybe even, you know, down to like the, you know, the particular lines. I click on one of them and now I've got something that shows me how to use it. And I can go look at it and go, oh, cool. All right. Copy paste. And so I'm, I'm basically creating, or you be basically creating a virtuous cycle where you're, you're documenting and having live code examples that don't stale in ReadMeMDs of what is actually in production. And that gives you examples that you can use in other, other contexts. Um, I do, I think we do plan to monetize it. <clears throat> um, you know, we're working hard on it. Uh, and yeah, so yes, probably monetization and definitely yes, NPM imports. To be honest, I mean, even in the NPM world, you don't get this kind of insight, right? At the very best, the, the stuff that I've seen outside of Orsa uh, goes and just, you know, give you, gives you the grid of dependencies. They, they look at all the package JSONs. They figure out, oh, okay, great. This, this one relies on this one at this version. You know, give you a nice node graph or whatever. But that doesn't tell you, like, if you've got an, a, a, component, a shared component library that's got 100 components in it, like, which one, who's using button, right? And at what, you know, you don't know. You know that they're using the component library, but you don't know within that what they're using. So I think this, this the, the uh, dashboard plugin and also this, this dashboard provide a good, you know, capability to do insights into that. All right. I, I burp, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, more questions before? This, is, this has been great. Thank you so much for the questions this time. I, I know it takes a lot to, to put a, a question into a form like this. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate that. And I, uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And of course, feel free to, um, you know, like this video <laughs> once it, once it goes through the amazingly long process of processing, it takes about almost a day to process these. I don't know why. I guess it's just the, the, the volume of stuff going to YouTube right now. Um, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm, I'm, I hope you guys have all subscribed. I think that's great. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, be happy, be healthy, be safe, as I always say. And uh, give me your best. Get to the chopper. Oh, hey, okay. Give me a, okay, here we go. You're, no, I, get, to the, get to the chopper is easy. Come on, that's, that's nothing. What you want is, uh, all right, this is, okay. You want the Conan line of like, Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of the women. Yeah, that's a classic, classic one. And there you go. Is that how we get a book sales plus one? All right. Anyway, uh, thank you guys. Have a great weekend. And uh, I hope to see you all. I will. Oh, awesome. And I will see you next week. Next week is going to be amazing. Uh, I'm going to do Next.js, and we're going to show you how to do uh, federated modules with Next.js right now on Webpack 4. Don't wait. You don't have to wait for Webpack 5 and all the support. You can do it right now. All right. I'll see you guys next week.